Hello children, today I'm here to teach you chapter 8 in your textbook that's called directions. So in this lesson we are planning to do location of a place from a given location in terms of the eight directions and identify the horizontal and vertical planes. Look at this. What is this one? This is called the compass. So the following figure shows an instance where the needle is pointed in the direction of the north. So the red color needle is where you see the direction. But here north marked this way and when you keep the compass on a surface or when you hold it like this, so it directs to the north. So in this one, this is the north direction. Then you can find out any direction where you need to go. So the compass is really important to see the direction, to measure the direction. Direction of sunrises, you already know that's east. Then direction of sunset, that's west. Direction of Jaffna, we already know it's in the north side, north direction. I write east direction, west direction and north direction. Then direction of Gaul, we know it's in the south, south direction. So what are the main directions that you have learnt before? North, east, west and South. Do you know this word? News is formed from the first letters of these four directions. See, N is north, E means east, W means west, and S means south. So, this means information obtained from all four corners of the earth. So, N means north, E means East, W represent West and S represent South. If you stand in facing the direction of sunrise, what direction are you facing? So what do you think? So sunrise from the East direction. When you look at that side, that's East. So what direction are you facing? That's East. What is the direction behind you? If we say this is east, so what is the side behind you? We call it west. If you stretch your hand in what direction is your left hand? So think about I am facing east. So my left side, what's the direction? Left side is my north side. And what direction is your right hand then? If it's north, this side is south. So write the directions using English letters. We use N, this way north, then this is south, S. East is this way, capital E, and west we represent using W. In the plans of land, the direction of north is shown using N letter. So, when you see the plans, you see a line, vertical line with N. So, that represent north. To verify the direction, what is the instrument used? So, how we measure the direction? I told you before, that's called the compass.
in what direction will the arrow turn and stop? So that's the north direction. So the red color pin always pointed to north. So ships navigate in oceans and planes fly in the sky with the help of the magnetic compass. So here we use magnetic compass. We use another compass. What's that? In your geometry set, we call that also compass. So we'll say this is magnetic compass to measure the direction. Look at this one. A is there, P, Q, R, S points are there. In what direction is P situated in relation to A? When you compare A and P, what's this direction? So we need this way. So that's north of A. So in relation to A, so when you stand in the place of A, so which direction is P? That's north. In what direction is Q situated in relation to A? So Q is here, this way. So what's the direction? That's actually this point should be here, this way. So that's east. If this is north, this way is east. In what direction is R situated in relation to A? Where's R? R is down. So that's what direction? That's south. In what direction is S situated in relation to A? It's from here to here. This is S. So that's west. Besides the four main directions, there are four other subdirections. Do you know that? We know main directions north, east, west, and south. In between also we can label the directions. In between, north and east. So here this is from north towards east. So we call that northeast. Northeast. So we can use N E for that. Now look at this side in between, north and west. So from north towards west, we call it northwest. We can denote it by NW. Then what about this direction? This one we can say in between south and east. So we say southeast. So use S E for that. And the other one is this direction in between south and west. Southwest. S W. So those are the sub directions that you need to know. So two directions using north, northeast and northwest and two directions using south, southeast and southwest. Mark all eight directions using English letters on the above diagram. North, south, east, west. Those are the main directions. Then you can say this is northeast, southeast, southwest, 
and north west so all together eight directions so here these are the letters north east n e north west n w south west s w and south east s e see how the sub directions are named in relation to north and south so two directions using north and two directions using south look at this diagram in what direction is a situated in relation to o so o is this point so what's the direction of a compared to o that's north so here can you see it's label this direction is north so that means this is north in what direction is e situated in relation to o that's straight away down that's south In what direction is G situated in relation to O? G is this side. So that's the west side. West. In what direction is C situated in relation to O? C is towards east. In what direction is B situated in relation to O? That's B. That's in between north and east. So we call that's northeast. In what direction is D situated in relation to O? That's D. D is this way. That's in between south and east. So we call southeast. In what direction is F situated in relation to O? F is here. That's in between south and west. Southwest. And in what direction is H situated in relation to O? That's in between north and west. We call northwest. Look at this diagram. What is the angle between north and east? So we know this is if you take the full circle, so divided into four parts, quarter of a circle. 360 divided by 4. So what is 360 divided by 4? That's 90 degrees. So the angle between north and east is 90 degrees. What about angle between east and south? This is also 90 degrees. And what is the angle between south and west? South and west is this one. So that's also 90 degrees. And what is the angle between west and north? West and north is this one. So that's also 90 degrees. So the main, the angle between main directions, you get 90 degrees. Look at this diagram, we see all eight directions. NE, that means northeast, is situated right between north and east. We know that. Now what you can write for SE? SE is situated right between south and east. Then SW, south west. South west is situated right between south and west. NW, northwest. Northwest is situated right between north and west. When you consider all eight directions, the angle between two adjacent directions are equal to. 
What's the angle here? So this is 90 degrees when you divide into half. Half of right angle. So you get half of right angle here. The angle between any two directions, you get half of a right angle. What's the value? 90 divided by 2, 45 degrees. So adjacent directions are equal to half of a right angle. Right angle means 90 degrees. Or you can write 45 degrees, 90 divided by Fill in the blanks showing the sub-direction in the diagrams given below. So this is north. So what's the sub-direction here? North-west, towards west side. N-W, north-west. This is north. We know that this is south. So this direction we call south-east, S-E. In between south and east. Write down few vertical planes. So what are the few vertical planes? Look at the board, whiteboard. So this is in the vertical plane. So I can write whiteboard. Then when you look at the TV, so the TV screen is Vertical plane, TV screen. Then what about walls? Walls of any building, that's vertical. And do And what else? Window. All these are. In the vertical plane. So what is vertical plane? So this way. Look at this one. There's a wall. This is the ground. The angle between a wall which is on a vertical plane and the ground which is on a horizontal plane. So this is we call this way is the horizontal plane. This is vertical. So the angle between these two planes, that's right angle, is a right angle. That's 90 degrees. So we call wall and the ground both are perpendicular, perpendicular to each other. If it's right angle, we use the word perpendicular. Perpendicular to the ground. What is the instrument used to recognize the vertical plane? So masons use that instrument to see whether the walls are vertical. So what's the instrument they use? Plumbing line. Plumb line. And what is the instrument used to recognize the horizontal plane? So whether the surfaces are level? So mason use spirit level. Spirit level. A cubicle box is placed on the table. Number of vertical planes, number of vertical edges you have to count. So look at this cube. So we'll label these A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And you are asked to count how many vertical planes are there. So when you look at this one, so here, this way, one vertical plane. That's F, E, C, B and G, H, A, D, another vertical plane. And what about D, C, E, H? That one is another vertical plane. And A, B, F, G, 
another vertical plane. So altogether, four vertical planes are there. Number of horizontal planes. So when you look at down, A, B, C, D is one horizontal plane and E, F, G, H is another horizontal plane too. Number of vertical edges. So when you take vertical edges, A, G, H, D, F, B, E, C. Those are the vertical edges we can see. So four. And how many horizontal edges are there? A, B, C, D, A, D, B, C. Four. G, H, E, F. G, H, G, F, F, E, G, H, H, E. All together, eight horizontal edges are there. Look at this one. So you get a plane and you get two lines, A, B and P, Q. Hold this book vertically. So what happens when you hold this book vertically? So I have the diagram. So I drew these two lines. So I'm holding this vertically. What can you say? Then the book is on the vertical plane. So this is vertical plane. PQ line is only vertical and AB line is not vertical. So can you see this is AB line is slant and only PQ line is vertical when I hold this this way on the vertical plane. Now if I keep the book on the table, I can see all three lines are on the horizontal plane. So I have that diagram. So these three lines, I drew it and keep on the table. So what can I say? A, B line, C, D and E, F. All three lines are on the horizontal plane. So all are on the horizontal plane. So this is important to identify what is vertical plane and what is horizontal plane. So when you hold it up, it's vertical plane, but we can see only PQ line is vertical, not the AB. But when you keep on the table, all the lines are on the horizontal plane. Look at this diagram. The direction from O to P. Here to here. What's that? So it's not mentioned. So this way, O to P, from O to P, that's north. The direction from P to Q. So here to here, this direction. So that's east. If this is north, this way is east. The direction from Q to R. What's this direction? This way. Q to R. This is north. This is east. In between north and east, we call northeast. The direction from R to S. So this way, so north is up, so that means south is here. So this is east. In between south and east, we call southeast. R to S is southeast. Then the direction from S to T, S to T is here. So this is south and this is West, in between south and west, we call southwest. And the direction from T to U. So T to U is this way. So this is north and this way is east again.
So here you have to mark the direction. So it's given north is up. From O, this is O. Go three squares to the north and mark it. Three squares north way. So we'll go three squares. One, two, three. North. And mark the point A. From A, go three squares to east and mark B. So we need to go three squares from here to east direction. So that's this point. We can mark this one as B. From B, go three squares to north and mark C. Again, we have to move three squares north this way and mark the point C. From C, go three squares to east and mark D. Again, from here, three squares east and mark the point D. From D, go six squares to south and mark E. Six squares south. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six squares south. This one. So what's the point there? That's E. And from E to O, what direction? Here to here. So what's the direction? From here to here. That's the west side. So that's west. From B to O. What direction? B to O. Here to here. So we need this way. So this is in between south and west. So we can say southwest. And from B to E. What direction? Here to here. B to E is this direction. That's in between south and east. We call it southeast. Now we we'll look at exercise in your textbook. Exercise 8.1. Fill in the blanks by considering the following figure. The blackboard is to the, you have to give the direction of the teacher's table. So where's the teacher's table? So this is the teacher's table and you need to check where the blackboard is. It's straight away up. So what's the direction? So here it marks as north this way. So this is north. North of the teacher's table. The desk is to the of the teacher's table. Where's the desk? Desk is here. When you are staying near the teacher's table, you see it's south direction. South. So, what is to the east of the teacher's table? Table is here. East means this direction. So what is this? That's the window. And what's the object is to the west of the teacher's table. So teacher's table here. This is towards west. That's the cupboard. Now look at the map of Sri Lanka. We will study further about directions by considering several places. Trincomalee is to the northeast of Dambulla. So north means this direction. So Dambulla and Trincomalee here. So in between north and east. So that's northeast.
So, this is northeast. And then Dambulla is to the southwest of Trincomalee. If you take Dambulla and the Trincomalee here this way, when you are in Trincomalee, you can see Dambulla towards southwest. Now look at Dondra head. That's here. Is to the south of Dambulla. When you are staying here in Dambulla, what can you see? If you are there, you can see it straight away down. That's south direction. And if you look at, if you are staying in Dondra head, then you can see Dambulla towards north. So that's north of Dondra head. It is clear from this that although the location of a place is fixed, the direction in which it lies depends on the place from which we observe it. So when you are in Dambulla, you see it in different direction with the Trincomalee. If you are in Trincomalee, Dambulla is another direction. But places are fixed not moving round. So you need to understand the location of a place is always depend with the direction when you are observing, the place where you are observing. Exercise 8.2 Upul's house and various places around his house are shown below. Complete the following table by writing the direction in which each place is located with respect to the house. So this is the house, the main point. Temple. Where is the temple now? Always look at the map. This north means up. So here to here. What's the direction? That's south. Shop. Shop is towards this side. South, west, in between southwest. South and west we call southwest. Post office. Where's the post office? Straight away up. That's north. School. School is this way. So that's in between north and east. We call northeast. Hospital. Hospital towards east side. Lake. Lake is in between south and east. We call southeast. And bus halt. Bus halt is towards west. So that's west. And railway station. Railway station is in between north and west. We call it northwest. Look at the next part. Copy the following sentences and fill in the blanks. While the post office is located to the of the house. Post office and house. Where's post office and where's the house? While the post office is located to the north of the house. That's above straight away above. That's north of the house. The house is located to the post office. House and the post office. Where's house? Here. Post office. Now the other way around. House is located to the south of the post office. When you are there in the post office, you see the house in the south direction. This one, to go from the bus hall to the post office. Bus 
called to the post office this way to go from bus halt to the post office one should travel towards the northeast and when returning from the post office to the bus bus halt one should travel towards the which direction south and west southwest so third one while the hospital is located to the post office hospital and the post office so which direction so hospital is in the south east direction so you can say south east of the post office and something is located to the southwest of the hospital from hospital southwest means the temple the temple is located to the southwest of the hospital and fourth one while something is located to the northeast of the temple when you are staying in temple north east north east means the hospital this way so what's that while the hospital while the hospital is located to the northeast of the temple and something is located to the north of the hospital north of the hospital hospital is here north is the school so the school is located to the north of the hospital then fifth one if a person travels from the temple towards the object we don't know he would come across the house from the temple that's the temple temple is here so that means here, if a person travels from the temple towards north direction, towards north, what happens? He would come across the house. So, here, definitely passing through the house. If he travels from house towards the west, house towards west, he would come across the bus halt. Called, then to reach reach the temple again from the bus halt from the bus halt to the temple this way again from the bus halt he should travel towards which direction this is south and east southeast Question number two. The square grid given below illustrates several places that are located on a flat ground. A rabbit who starts moving from the place named A travels along the path indicated by the arrows eating desmodium, that's Udupelia, and returns again to A. Complete the following table by writing the directions along the path which the rabbit travels. So we'll start from A. So A to B. So it's mentioned this is north. So A to B that's north. From B to C we see that towards this side that's east and from C to D that's down that's south and D to E that's in between north and east we call northeast. And E to F, this way, that's in between south and east, southeast. And F to G, F to G means in between south and west, southwest. And G to A, 
that's towards west side west now look at the same diagram if you stood at position a and observe the movements of the rabbit write down the direction in which you would see the rabbit as it passes each of the following locations b so now you are here b is to the north d d is from here that's in between north and east northeast E, e is also towards the same direction. So this is northeast. And G from here to here, that's towards east. Look at the map, question number three. Answer the following questions by considering the cities marked on the given map. Mention the direction in which Puthalam lies with respect to Kandy. Respect to Kandy means you are there in Kandy. So which direction? That's towards this side. That's north and West in between, north west direction. So, first question is north west. And the direction in which candy lies with respect to Puttala, if you are there, you see this way that means in between south and east. That's southeast. Name the city you think would be most affected by a cyclone which blows across the island in the southwest direction from the Baticlo shores. There's Baticlo here. So Baticlo, so north is here. If you draw the diagram, and this is southwest. Southwest means this direction. So, what's the affected area? Mostly affected which area? Matara. If straight roads are marked from Dankotua to Matara, Dankotua is here to Mathara. This one. And from Mathara to Ampara. Where's Ampara? Mathara to Ampara. Here. Mention in order the two directions which a person who goes from Dankotua to Ampara along those roads will travel. So it mentioned when you when you want to go to Ampara towards this way. So there are two ways of going to Ampara. So if straight roads are marked from Danko to Mathara and from Mathara to Ampara Mention in order. The two directions which a person who goes from Danko to Ampara. So the person needs to go this way. Danko to Ampara. Along those roads will travel. So what are the directions? So first he needs to travel this way. So what's this way? That means in between south and east. So first he needs to go to southeast direction. So southeast first. And then then this way. So this way means in between 
if you draw the diagram, this is north, north and east. In between north and east, that's northeast. Then travel towards northeast. Mention two places that are approximately north of Mathara. So, this is Mathara towards north. So, what are the places you can see? Here, from here, straight away up. What are the places you can see? Kandy and Vaunia. So, the two places are Kandy and Vaunia. Those are the two places to the north direction from Mathara. Question number four. A soldier who was being trained to walk through forest was taken to a rocky surface in a forest and given the following in instructions based on which he had to complete his journey. So you are asked to draw this information in a rough diagram. So we'll start to draw. What's the first place? That's the rocky surface. So I'll take here rocky surface. Rocky surface. So from rocky surface, five hundred meters towards east of rocky surface, you will come across foot bridge. So five hundred meters foot bridge. So this is foot bridge. So five hundred meters. Towards east, you get the footbridge. Then, what's the next one? After crossing the footbridge, the travelling and travelling 800 meters towards northeast. Northeast means this way. What's the place? You will come across a waterfall. That's a waterfall. How many meters? That's 800 meters. So this way, 800 meters meters. Then when you travel a distance of 600 meters from the waterfall towards southeast. South is here. Southeast is this way. So southeast how many kilometers? 600. So somewhere here. Southeast is here. So this one. So that's Kithul tree. How many meters? That's 600 meters towards the So this way. Now the next one. When you travel 750 meters towards the southwest from here, Southwest means this way. So, southwest, you will come across a cave. Seven hundred fifty, so less than eight hundred. So, somewhere here, you get the cave. This is a seven hundred fifty meters. You get the cave. Then, by traveling 800 meters from the cave towards the northwest, from here, northwest means again this way. How many meters? 800 meters. 
So can you see this is 600. So 800 meters means more than that towards northwest. Northwest. So you need to draw a line more than this here. Yeah. Somewhere here because 800 meters from the cape. That's the camp. So this is the camp. And by traveling 800 meters from Cape towards Northwest, you will return to the camp. So this is the final place. Based on the information that has been provided to the soldier, draw rough diagram. So started from this place and traveled this way and this is the final location. Exercise 8.3. A cube placed on a horizontal plane is shown in the figure. Name the horizontal and vertical edges that you see. Horizontal. This, these are horizontal edges. So I'll label this A, B, C. D, E, F and you can't see the G point. So if I draw it again here, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, this is I'll mark G and this point H. Those are the vertices, and I'll write down what are the horizontal planes, horizontal and vertical edges. So we need to write down not the planes, edges. So horizontal. So this is on the table. So AB, BC, CH, AH. All horizontal. And FG, GD, ED, and EF. So all are horizontal edges. What are the vertical edges? This way. AF, BG, EH, CD. One, two, three, four. Four edges are there. That's vertical. Draw a simple sketch of the chair given here and mark three horizontal and vertical surfaces as well as three horizontal and vertical edges. We'll try to sketch the chair. So we can draw like this and there's a line here and one. Two, three, four. So we need to mark horizontal planes and edges and vertical planes and edges. So we'll mark planes. So when you take this one, so this is 
horizontal plane. So this one, horizontal plane. And here up there also, you get horizontal plane, a small plane there. And And when you talk about horizontal edges, this is also horizontal. So horizontal, I'll mark in blue. And this is horizontal. This is horizontal. This is horizontal. All these sides are horizontal. When it comes to vertical, vertical, I can draw these are the vertical planes. One, two, these are black color ones are the vertical planes. So here there's another middle line. All these are vertical planes. Vertical planes and edges. Here I write horizontal plane and edges. Question number three. The following figure is a vertical pigeon cage. The pigeons are named as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Fill in the following blanks with the aid of the figure. The pigeon hole with Pigeon A lies horizontal to the pigeon hole with pigeon A. First A is here. A lies horizontal to the pigeon hole with pigeon C. Horizontal this way. The pigeon hole with pigeon B. Here lies vertically below the pigeon hole with pigeon A. That's vertically down. The pigeon hole with pigeon F, this one, lies to the pigeon hole with pigeon E. So, which direction? This way. Horizontal. So, you can write horizontal. To the pigeon hole with pigeon E. The pigeon hole with pigeon C, this one, lies the pigeon hole with pigeon D. So this is vertical. So I can write vertically below or something. Vertical. Vertically, which direction? The pigeon hole with pigeon D. Vertically up. The pigeon holes with pigeons B, D, G. All these three. Lies on the same horizontal plane. So again check it, the pigeon hole with pigeon A lies horizontal to the pigeon hole with pigeon C, C and A, horizontal. Pigeon B and pigeon A, B and A, vertically, so vertically below. The pigeon hole with pigeon F and E, that's horizontal. To the pigeon hole with pigeon E and the C and D, C and D vertically down, vertically up. This one is vertically up, and the pigeon holes with pigeon B, D, G that's in the horizontal plane. So we covered all theory related to 
directions. So you need to remember what are the main directions? North, South, East, West. And there are another four sub directions. North, East, South, East, South, West and North, West. The horizontal and vertical are also useful in expressing the location of objects. So you need to know what's an horizontal plane and a vertical 